Welcome and thank you so much for stopping by fellow fans of Clash of Clans in today's episode. Well, we've got some content that I am excited to put together for you. Many of you have asked for and it should be pretty interesting. We're going to talk about the history of Legend League and trophies in Clash of Clans. Now, of course, playing for nearly 10 years, I have lived much of this history myself. And if you want to get a chance to watch more exciting Clash of Clans content, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. You have notifications turned on and you could always be a great person and leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Now, right here, we are looking at content from way back in the day, the old days of Clash of Clans before Town Hall 11, 12, 13, 14 and the creator code existed, right? Those things are newer. And of course, the creator code is a huge way that Supercell has given you, the viewer, a chance to thank us hardworking content creators, not just Galadon, but many other content creators. So make sure you're using a creator code before you make a purchase in any Supercell game. But back to the action, this action that we speak of was actually my attack way back in the day when I finally reached 5,000 trophies for the very first time as a brand new Town Hall 11. Now, of course, at Town Hall 10, 4,000 trophies had been the big record and Jorge Yao was the first player to ever achieve 4,000 trophies. Now, it was kind of controversial because back in the day, it was a smaller pool of players. And yes, if you had multiple accounts, it was possible to do a little bit of win trading, maybe run into one of your own accounts, give it a shield, that sort of thing. All of the attacks only pretty much gave you one trophy at a time back then. And it sometimes took an hour or longer to get an attack. This is at 4,000 trophies, long before Legend League. Now the span from 4,000 to 5,000 trophies created much more in the terms of clouds. That is that searching for a base screen that us old time players saw for many, many hours and made Clash of Clans a truly unique game in that it's probably the only game that players would play for 10, 12, 18, even 24 hours a day and not be able to play, but maybe for a couple of minutes. Now, eventually, one player, Shaheen UAE, was the first to make it to 5,000 trophies and Legend League. Unfortunately, well, it turns out that this player was a pilot, and that means he was, a, not me, not me. It was, it was definitely not Galadon, but there was somebody playing somebody else's account, and this was very common back then before Operation Blue, and it wasn't Darien either. I, 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 I didn't want to show the actual person's face, but I'm just saying this was a common thing where players would pay others to pilot their account, to play it 24 seven, because before the modern day Legend League, it technically was a game that you could play 24 hours a day seeking to find a base to attack. And of course that meant probably more than one person doing it, or like in that picture, could be one person playing many accounts and then people going through shifts. Now, all of that is of course, highly against the Clash of Clans terms of service and can and will and did get many thousands of accounts banned for life. Now, these days, modern Clash post Operation Blue Skies, we don't see as much of that, but it still happens. There is some suspicious, obvious account sharing or whatever, and that's why there are continually accounts being banned and that mysteriously disappear from either the clan leaderboards or CWL or any sort of other major tournament. Now, the actual big update that changed the way Legend League works was back in June of 2019. I will try to remember to put a link here to that video that completely explained the change and you can kind of get an idea how basically Clash of Clans went from literally unplayable for all top level trophy players to a limit of eight Legend League attacks a day that was determined to be the sweet spot and it really hasn't changed. That number was based upon what the average player wanted to do. Many of you, yes, say we should have more or some would even say less Legend League attacks but I feel like eight has kind of been that magic number that is just the right amount of gameplay for somebody in Legend League to get practice, but not feel overwhelmed and also not letting people run away with it like in the old days when essentially it really was whoever had the most time to play, those were the players that were going to be the highest in Legend League. And of course, also you have the trophy reset which wasn't a thing way back in the day either. So you saw players pushing further and further away from the pack. And yes, most of it was done unfairly. 
Now, of course, it doesn't mean that everything is fair in this day and age of Clash of Clans, and let's be honest, it seems suspiciously like there are a lot of players with the same name that are in the very top end of Legend League. Now, of course, a lot of this is, believe it or not, people with too much money on their hands deciding that they want more self-perceived fame by paying other people who have high-level accounts to change their name to their name. You know, to, to, you know what I'm saying, right? To change their name so that they all, and we've seen this in the past, not so much right now, but maybe a year ago or so, there was a point where it was like nine of the top 10 finishers in Legend League all had the same name. And yes, it's annoying. And also they were in the same clan or maybe they were in a same family of clans. It looks like, and there were a lot of accusations of win trading, of players going easy on others, specifically pushing certain accounts up higher and higher and higher. And if you go back and yes, you could see that was the weather report of the old Quest of 5000 series that is on my channel. If you go back and look at that, you can see that there was a point where I was getting to attack in Clash of Clans once every six or eight hours. And yes, it's definitely ridiculous. Families everywhere suffered, including my own wife. When I was up in the middle of the night, sometimes I would literally prop up the iPad next to the bed and start to fall asleep with the sound turned up and the screen turned down. So if I found a base, hopefully the sound would wake me up and then I would conduct a Legend League attack, get like one trophy, and then go back to sleep. And if you really were dedicated, you did this. Of course, now I've never shared, bought, or sold, or done anything with an account that could be considered suspicious. So it was very, very hard for somebody like me, even back then, when every attack was pretty much going to be a win, to compete with the people who were cheating. And fortunately, now it seems like it's pretty much dominated by skill, but you also have to remember that yes, all of these matchups between players are based upon trophies. And when you get so extremely high in trophies, many thousands of trophies higher than the average player, that the number of players in that pool is going to be extremely small compared to the pool of total players. And that increases the likelihood that friends will find friends and when that happens, sometimes there can be, you know, spoken or unspoken rules and exchanges of trophies between friends. We definitely saw this in Clash Royale. We've seen it in the Clash of Clans builder base as well. And it is extremely difficult to combat from Supercell's side. And again, you have to remember that here is Supercell, a company that has about 200 employees in Finland. And then they have tens of millions of daily players of their games. It makes it tough to police everybody. And that's a big reason why Global also disappeared because it's just preventatively expensive for them to have enough customer service, player support people to handle all of that stuff. And again, that I'm kind of getting into another subject here, and that is the struggles and difficulties of player support. And yes, I hear that a lot from you guys in the comments as well. And I know that it's less than perfect, but unfortunately there's really nothing I can do about it. And I know that Supercell is aware of it as well. But anyway, back to Legend League modern present day. And as you can see, obviously I am out there trying to grab three stars occasionally using Queen Charge Hybrid. And of course, still not having a reason to push trophies in Legend League. And that is, as we are going to wrap up this episode, the one point I wanted to remind Supercell and everybody else about is there should be some sort of reward for getting Legend League trophies. I don't think it should be beyond cosmetic, but let's offer players something for all of that work, all of that struggle every season to grab as many trophies as they can. Let me know what you guys think. I hope this was interesting to you. I know it's always fun for me to take a flash into the past of Clash of Clans. If there's other subjects you would like me to cover as well, I am happy to do that. Just let me know down in the comments. Remember, stay subscribed, stay notified. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of the episode. Galafam, you are the true hashtag Galafam. That is why I love thinking about it and appreciate every single one of you every single day. So get out there, make the best of the rest of your day, week, month, and year. Be kind, I love you, bye. I almost on the planet. I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. Galadon, Galadon, don't forget, Peter $17, one Clash of Clans, long before you, or Jorge Yao, or Shaheen, whoever, it was Peter!